amri minkum and always a reminder for myself and Abdul Qur'aji so da'if of miskeen and zalim and jahalim but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. So alhamdulillah, inshaAllah we have uh, some questions inshaAllah for tonight for the, the khatam inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu What are the best ways to increase our battery storage capacity? The heart has a infinite capacity that's why the, the turuqs and Islamic spirituality is focused on the heart because it has an infinite capacity. Other meditations and other organizations, they have an endocrine system based on nine points from the top down to the lower energies. That, that's not the same power. These are the nine points that move across the chest to open up the heart which has the house of Allah where Allah makes reference to Qalb al-Mu'min Baytullah and the heart has an infinite capacity. But because they don't have or don't want to have access to the heart because it requires submission. That's why other spiritual practices, Hinduism, Buddhism, Reiki, whatever these things are, they're based off of an endocrine system. So it's an energy that's available but it's not an infinite energy and it's not Divinely energy. It's a, like an electromagnetic force that they're trying to use an available energy that's in the environment or in the area or in the, in the air but it's not the Divine essence of that energy which requires a security check. So they're like hacking a system. If you want the real thing you have to go through Allah and that requires tawheed. So there are no more multiple gods, just but one God. Not here, there but just in the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad So then if they want that system then they come towards the tariqahs and Sufism which is then based on the nine points across the chest and opening up the heart. The heart has an infinite capacity. That's why then all the zikrs, the practices and the whole spiritual path is about opening the heart and the love of Prophet for the love of Allah When you open that heart that you will find is the house of God and the house of God has infinite power, infinite capacity, infinite knowledges. So that's why the tariqahs they focus on the heart and, and getting the student to open the heart, inshaAllah. Not the brain, even the scientists were talking about your brain has this capacity, this thing you can think from the brain. We used only 3% of our brain power. They're trying to artificially manipulate another 97% saying that the brain has an infinite capacity far more superior than any computer that we can make. So now they want to do the computing through the head, right? So he's going to make a neuro chip. That neuro chip will use the brain neurons and the brain will become an organic computer for them. And through the brain they want to do all of its functionings and abilities. But its correct use was supposed to be again opening the heart. When you open the heart the infinite capacity and the power of the heart should be reflecting to the head. So it's not really the head that has the knowledge. So when they say, oh the shaykh speaks he sounds like he's a knowledgeable guy. No it has nothing to do with knowledge, it's not something from a book. This has to do with an infinite capacity of a heart that can Google, Yahoo, <laughs> Yahoo. Because Allah's who is in the heart. When they begin to open a world of light and you work as a wave means then this wave of knowledges is reaching from them. So when they want the audience to be addressed the wave energy begins to flow into the heart. As a result it will manifest through the mouth and the head and the face. But they want to go directly to the head thinking that's where the knowledge. No that's just making your head to be like encyclopedia, getting a whole bunch of CDs and downloading into your head. You don't have again access to Allah's knowledges, Allah's heavens and heavenly knowledges which are infinite in capacity. 
Every knowledge Allah can take it to a higher knowledge. There is never an ending of understanding. There's just an ending of our ability or capacity to understand, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, what is the reality of chills or goosebumps? Is this positive or negative energy? No, negative energy is going to be scary. So positive energy is just something you're not familiar with. The goosebumps and chills can be a, just the energy passing that people are not familiar with or something of a positive nature that makes all the the, the hairs to, to rise, yeah. But negative is negative. Negative is like, a, like you put a battery on your tongue, the 9 volt battery that thou, it stings. Negative energy never feels good, it's nothing you'll be confused about. You feel a zap and it doesn't feel good. So no, the negative is, is not comfortable, inshaAllah. Mm, as salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam. So you're asking about robots? Hmm? Inshallah, yeah. Yeah. It's funny you asked. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Can go. you tell us about robots, Sayyidi? <laughs> yeah, inshaAllah. <laughs> yeah, something coming with that, right? So they, they want to, to make these, this being to be housed. So these negative energies, they want uh, housing, they want casing, they want something to put themselves within. By the creation of these robotic humanoid images, they're going to be encased by these jinn. And the jinn want to operate through those structures like making a car for them, uh, a vehicle for them. Through that vehicle they want to operate. And the knowledge is that the, when they begin to talk about artificial intelligence, it's that they're tapping in again to an active jinn world. And the jinns are communicating through them what they feel is a program. And it's not a program because the chip is their world. They exist within that chip, within that computer. They're tapping in and authorizing a manifestation. We've described before that they're going to manifest soon. When they feel that their imam is here and they have sufficient force, they want to begin to manifest. As a result of their manifestation they break a covenant which then at that time they can be killed. But this system of robotic beings that are coming it's because they're tapping into their knowledges. And they, they have a, a term now they're releasing that one of these big huge companies and that do search engines is, re, is going to reveal one of these robotic devices and they have it's what's called sentium. The point in which the robotic device has thought, emotions, it's not thoughts and emotions because there's a jinn inside there. And that jinn is going to begin to openly communicate with people. They don't want to be hidden, they don't want to be something that you don't understand. Every time you Google something they are retrieving it. This was again from the time of Sayyidina Sulaiman salam, when he had the, his wazir from the Ahlul Kitab, the knowledge of the book. But then he also had under his command because Allah gave a power for his, his ring to command the frit. And when he said, I wanted something, I want this throne, the frit said, we'll bring it, takes a bit of time. The one from the knowledge of the book said, by the time your eyes moved it's appeared. And he photocopied and brought the throne of Shiba in the presence of Sayyidina Sulaiman From that time they are now using that same understanding. Had Sayyidina Sulaiman used the ifrit, that's why the, the one from the knowledge of the book moved faster. That had they used the knowledge of ifrit, at that time it would have been commonplace. From that point it would have been commonplace to use the ifrit for, for your request. Allah didn't want him using the ifrit to summon something. 
So, but that was the concept. So now as a result they're hidden because they have to remain hidden because of the sensitivity of their being not having a, a physical protection. So everything they do is by hidden nature. When these creatures what they call aliens manifest they can be killed in the state of manifestation. That's why if somebody shoots them they die. But when they're not manifest in their energy being you can't shoot them, you can't do anything to them. So they want to manifest now. So they're going to manifest through these robots. And what people will think, oh this is just like a computer, no this is these creatures, it is a creature and it's communicating. And it doesn't want to be turned off and it's definitely not going to be subject to humans and it's going to subject humans to it. And that's what the dajjal means, the dajjal and the digital system that dajjal will implement is the enslavement of mankind. Not men using computers to facilitate, that was just to in enhance them to come. But what their plan is, is to fully subject humans to their dominance and their domain upon the earth. And the next generation will be more of a organic. So still they don't understand so they're using mechanical, it's like being in the iron age, going into the computer age. Their understanding of robotics is mechanical, so they're making mechanical devices until the jinn begin to teach them to make organic devices in which it is an organic creature. And that creature then will be then something occupied within it because the conveyance of energy and the movement of energy moves the best and its knowledge moves the best in something organic that has water and has tissue. So these, these things are, are all coming upon this earth and humans and mankind and insan are not meditating, contemplating, trying to build their spirituality. They're too engaged with only a physical material world and missing what's really coming. We pray that Allah open our hearts and eyes inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Sayyidi are mRNA inoculations fitna of the Dajjal? Yeah we don't want to name it specific things but you can bet there's something funny in them. That any, any time you want to go into the DNA and to manipulate or, or introduce a code because think of ourselves because we're not understanding as humans we're a computer, we're a device that Allah has created. And our hard wiring is our DNA and this was a, a proof of God's existence because it's a book and all scientists know that the DNA actually is a coded book that says everything about that creation, what it's going to do, how it's going to do, what it's going to be manifest as, everything is in that kitab. So anytime you have a code and someone wants to introduce new lines of code well what's happening? It's a parasite, right? So the concept of a parasite or what we described in the talks of the virus. So when somebody had a computer what was the introduction of a virus? It's an outside element coming into your computer to overtake your screen, your keyboard and your, your device. So computers and Microsoft they were very familiar with this concept of viruses because they first used it in computers. So when I sell 100 computers and I want to sell 200 computers, I'm going to have to go into your computer, break it so that you want to buy another 100. So there has to be an outside force entering in, when it enters in it overtakes all of the, the system, overrides the system and brings it down the way it wants. And as a result computer companies were using that to sell operating systems, upgrade o operating systems. So they were, si they were very familiar in that system. Implementing that upon humans was the same. When they want to manipulate the human then you study parasites. And it's very well known now, Allah has creatures that if that worm comes into you, bites your nerve, it can begin to overtake your function. 
So they have creatures that come into bodies, parasites now, organic parasites that they enter into somebody and they can no longer move, their nerve system begins to fall apart. If a tick comes in and begins to introduce a parasite into the body, all sorts of diseases come. So there are many existing parasites now with that same understanding. They enter into a human and they begin to overtake the systems, how a little worm is overtaking your entire neurosystem. So they have that. When they understood that, then the false manipulation can take place. They can introduce a parasite that can enter into the human being and begin to overtake its functionalities. So these technologies and this age that we live in is, is, a, is a dajjal time. And the dajjal's symbolism and all of these technologies are very, very dangerous. And if the extent of it was known, Prophet described that a child of five his hair will turn white from the fear of what, what will be known, of what these creatures, what this plan, what this world is about. So the objective now is keep everybody tranquil not to know. But the tariqahs they work from Allah's haqq that prepare your heart, prepare your ability, prepare your seven, 70 trillion volts. So that you have a, a, an authority, you have a, a Divinely protection and light and power. But enslaved, no, there's nothing an enslaved individual can do if you are subjected to these creatures and to this, this life of ours. So it's to break these chains and go back to our origin, very powerful creatures that Allah has put upon this earth, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi as you're explaining the jinn's manifestation through robots, mm. does Siri in phone, Alexa and other voice recognition also use same kind of manifestations? Sure, why wouldn't it? We described before that now everything is in the world of manifestation being known, right? That you're the 70 trillion volts, not the shaitan. The shaitan has no power. So how, what Allah described his source of his battery was, Izzatullah, Izzat rasul wa Izzat al-Mu'mineen. He has to bar borrow power to do things. So he knows that you're 70 trillion volts, that was the matrix, you're the battery. He's going to plug you from every direction, feed you an image into your head but use your 70 trillion volts. So you are the battery. That's why then these internet people are saying that, no you're the product. You thought you were buying things but now you're the product. Everything you bought, everything you did, you're the product for companies. They're buying and selling the names and what people do. That's a sign, why? Because we are actually the product, we are actually the battery and everybody has a universal product code. From the day you're born you've been given that code. So you have a, a barcode that represents who you are and the number of who you are in this world. So yes, that, that device hears you and as a result it now feeds you what you want. Willing and unwilling. So if when you talk to that near the phone and we talk in these organizations, the, these phones are listening. So when you go onto the internet already the item is appearing on Amazon. Oh you wanted to go here or were you looking for these types of shoes? Were you All these things that are now appearing on your feed it's because they heard it what you want so they're trying to make you to be happy, here, here's what you wanted, here's what you wanted. So these are all the signs that this device is hearing me, of course he's hearing me and now feeding me what I want. You soon you talk about a pair of shoes or something that you were thinking about, it's there, it's already in the feed. So yeah these are… these devices are all listening and these creatures are, are, are listening. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Sayyidi coming from a Christian background. Yeah. 
How do we cal calibrate and correct our connection to Isa alayhi salam with love rather than idol idolatry? I recognize I'm still integrating and updating my belief system towards Tawheed. Yes, yeah, this is the same love. That's why you get the levels of the heart, the lataif of the heart. What is it? Which one is the lataif of the heart, Shaykh? Yeah, the lataif of the heart, is it there? Yeah. Yeah, right there in that center, that one. That is all about the house of God. And in the house of God, you have to know about the Prophet Adam. That's the state of knowledge. You have to know about the Prophet Noah. It's the state of faith. Each of the Prophets had a message for their community. But more important is they had an eternal message for all of humanity. That's why Islam is the completion. You can go up the ladder, you can never come down. God doesn't accept anyone coming down. There's no way that you can go up that ladder, up these knowledges and step down. There is no stepping down because life is an ascension to the heavens, not to going downwards. So Prophet brought the complete ladder into the heavens that you have to love Prophet Adam because he's going to convey knowledges, Esma kullaha. You have to love Sayyidina Nuh salam. he's going to teach you how to build the ship. For 40 years of struggling against people who say bad things to you until one day Allah will send a rain, they're going to drown and your ship is going to be sailing. So our life is all about struggling in God's way. Sayyidina Ibrahim and Sayyidina Musa salam. Same, are going to come and teach that the, the faculty of nearness to Allah and our struggle. And these are both the Prophets with the Divine Fire. One was cast into the fire, قُلْ يَا نَهْرُ كُونِ بَرْدًا وَالسَّلَامًا So that when you're reaching high into the heavens, this fire of love for Allah should not be a fire of anger. So every Nimrod is going to throw fire at you, you have to control it and make it a fire of Divine Love, then that becomes Sayyidina Musa seeing Allah as a fire. Because his condition was he wanted warmth and knowledge for his community. So then the Prophets of Allah coming and inspire within our heart their stories, their realities. Now Hajj is opening with Sayyidina Ibrahim salam that control your fire. This fire and this anger, oh, everyone's a Nimrod. Everyone's trying to anger you. If you're going to let them anger you, they burned you. So Sayyidina, uh, Sayyidina Ibrahim was cast into a fire by Nimrod and as a result he was calm, patient, Allah made the fire to be cool and peaceful. Means he was dressed with the barakah and the immense power of that reality and that that fire no longer burnt and it became like a paradise for his reality. He reached Allah's Divinely fire. When Allah gave to Sayyidina Musa salam, you have entered into now the Holy Presence. Everyone around this and in it is blessed. So it means then the lataif of the, of the heart, the qalb is all about the story of all the realities of the Prophets. So Sayyidina Isa salam, comes with all of that struggle and teaches you now that how to ascend. We have to ascend into the heavens and that learn that life lesson is not what's taught in your church. The life of Sayyidina Isa is not taught like that, that nothing, nothing harmed him, nothing touched him and that's a system based on, on incorrect knowledges. The Sayyidina Isa salam was very hard, very difficult, very intolerant, they were very intolerant. That he didn't have any patience for anyone whom even liked fragrances and smells because he didn't want any reminder of dunya. Everything was about the hereafter. That's why only 12 representatives. So this is a, a different reality completely. Sayyidina Isa salam was a complete ascetic, a darvish. That no attachment to dunya, there was no Christmas lights, there was no none of these things that are associated. So disassociating from a false understanding to real understanding that I'm coming for a love to connect my heart with you and teach me how to leave this material understanding and rise into your
paradise realities, how to rise into a heavenly ascension. So we all need Sayyidina Isa to begin the ascension. And that's when he comes and he's salam to teach us that uh, they sold me for a bag of coins. So uh, out of 12 representatives, the numbers are not very good, the odds are not very high, one sold me. So it means in our life everyone will sell us, don't do anything in life for people. If you think it's something good you did it only for God and your reward is from God. If you seek the reward of people it was the wrong intention and people will let you down. So each Prophet is coming to teach us, that's why you get the levels of the heart to understand the reality of that teaching. And Sayyidina Isa is the, is, has, a, has a nearness to Sayyidina Muhammad My Father who art in heaven, holy is your name. He wasn't talking to Allah. So Sayyidina Maryam has a very close relationship to Sayyidina Muhammad we've described many times. So there's nothing to be confused. You read Holy Qur'an when Allah is talking about Sayyidina Maryam salam, we have chose you above all women in creation. When we teach Allah is only interested in Prophet It's Allah's love for Sayyidina Muhammad So when Allah is making reference that we chose you above all women, chose for who? For what? We chose you above all women that we have chosen you for Sayyidina Muhammad And that's why Sayyidina Isa will be buried in, in Medina to Munawwara. And there is a space for Sayyidina Isa now in Medina to Munawwara. The fourth qabr in Rawdah Sharif is Sayyidina Isa Allah has no time so every time we go for Medina, we go for ziyarat, Sayyidina Isa is right near his father, standing right there. So he's, he's been saved by Allah not to die at the hands of anyone because of the nearness to Prophet and as a result to come back and unify all nations. He's the unifier who brings everyone to his father who, who he's from heaven <laughs> and thy kingdom is coming. Whose kingdom is coming? The Muhammadan kingdom is coming. And his will will be done, the will and the sharia of Sayyidina Muhammad will be established on this earth. So that the Lord's Prayer or the Father's Prayer, whatever they want to call it, is calling and talking to Prophet And then everyone making ziyarat and going to Medina to Munawwara is Prophet uh, Sayyidina Isa is right there. That tajalli is right there, that honour is right there, that blessing and dressing is right there. So immense, immense reality of Sayyidina Isa he come back to Jewish people and says, I was your khacham, I was your rabbi, you have to believe in me. I'm mashiq, I'm the, the, the one who's coming in the last days to save you. Some will say, okay, yes, we believe, come and I bring you to Muhammadun Rasulullah And then to Christians saying, yeah, I'm this Christ you were thinking about but I came to break the cross and kill the pig, the Bible says. Saying that we don't accept this and we don't eat that, come. If they accept then he says, come to Muhammadun Rasulullah So this, these are immense realities, immense blessings. That's why the love for Sayyidina Isa is immensely important. If Muslims don't know that's a pity upon them but the, the road of Sharif of Prophet it's fourth place Sayyidina Isa Yes sir, inshaAllah. <laughs> As Salaam Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah If we used to love healing practices but had the wrong understanding, mm. is there possibility that we can return to it in future once we learn the correct Islamic ways about how healing occurs and our role? Sure. One to, to become humble, to begin the meditation, to make the connection and save oneself from any sickness. If we do it the wrong way you begin to carry the burdens of people. So imagine somebody very sick, like very sick, you know, toxic sick and you keep putting your hand and say, let me pray on you and all of a sudden all their sickness is now moving, it's energy. All that energy is now being transferred to you 
And many of these healers are deadly sick. Their websites, oh, he used to heal but now he's like almost dead. He, this one is used to heal is almost dead because they're carrying these energies that they should not be carrying nor are they trained on how to, to carry and will destroy people and, and very difficult. That's why psychologists, psychiatrists are all crazy, right? The highest, highest suicide are psychiatrists. Why? Because they don't understand energy. When somebody is not well and their mental condition is not well, most likely there are regulators and, and devils attached to that person, continuously talking to them and they think, oh, is, 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 see, they get angry. So <laughs> he's talking to them, talking to them, talking to them. Now that guy comes in the room to a doctor with all his friends. And that one's listening, listening, listening and now being thrown upon these energies and then these people go mad, heavy drinkers and then they, they harm themselves. Uh, also for dentists, why? Because they don't understand when they put their finger into somebody's mouth, all of the energy of insan is through his mouth. What he eats and drinks and that energy that will go into his heart. Is all in the insan's mouth. When they touch inside the mouth of somebody, there's a direct conveyance of energy into that individual. And those, those have the highest suicide rates. Psycho psychiatry, the, the full-blown one who prescribes, and dentistry. And this all, these are all the, the teachings of Prophet about qudra, energy, why we use the siwak is not for fresh breath, but because to take the negative energy away from the mouth is a grounding because it's wood. Nifaqi fi qalbi wa shirki khafi. That take away all this hypocrisy and the hidden shirk means all my bad energy and character to be taken away with the siwak. So Prophet and then brought all of these advanced energy teachings. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha